This is a homebrew podcast. Slay the Stars is a D&D actual play podcast you're looking for. A dark fairy tale cosmic fantasy. Now that's what I'm talking about. Listen in every other Tuesday at noon, Eastern Standard Time on any major streaming platform. Slaythestars.com, Persomnia at Astra. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Mythcraft the Podcast. Let's go around and introduce our acrimonious anarchists, starting with Nathan. Heal the god. Don't cross me. Mel. Thistle Featherfoot. I got a lot of complex feelings about what just happened. Tanner. Friend, the golem. I'm pretending they can't see me. Roger. Lucian Delware. And I don't think these are the stories I want to be telling. And Cody. Old man Harlow. Here, guys, come get some of this leftover ice cream. Scraped it off, friend. <laughs> just a milkshake. <laughs> oh, perfect. Um, so, a uh, quick reminder that we are going to be getting official character art coming Ooh. very soon that we will be releasing first in Discord before anywhere else. So, be sure to hop in the Discord for early access. That is discord.gg slash mythcraft. So, when we ended last session... Uh, it was a pretty big one. The party had just finished their interrogation of Fenfir Elmwish, who revealed a lot of information on the progression of the Rashlani invasion and their knowledge of the party. A few members of the party stayed around after the start of the process and began to see the darkness of the world and how they reacted to it. When Elmwish revealed he was one of the ones who summoned the fiends that destroyed Hildegard's village, she leapt on him, which then resulted in his demise after his chair tipped backwards and he fell on the ground. So once this interrogation ended, uh, Harlow and friend had left to go get some ice cream and walk around and chat a little bit. And upon returning back, uh, friend was fairly upset and kind of went into his stationary state before everyone kind of split off and went their separate ways. And so we're going to kind of check in with everyone and see how they're faring. Uh, we'll start with Harlow and Lucian. You guys were hanging out in the in the castle and discussing what had just happened. So uh, what are you guys up to now? Uh, Harlow, I, again, I wanted to thank you for, I guess, being a sounding board, being someone that I can bounce my thoughts off of. Again, like I said, ever since Kiris has left, I feel as if... And he kind of gestures, like, the direction where the rest of the crew has, like, left and gone outside. <sighs> I feel like a shepherd with a flock, but no dog to help guide them. I I worry we've gotten in too deep, Harlow. Too quickly. Nah, you're overthinking it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you make it seem so, so simple, Harlow. I, how does one turn it off? You seem so cool, calm, and collected all the time. How do you do it? You know what's funny is that you kind of remind me of me when I was your age. And I stroke my big long beard. <laughs> I used to be quite handsome too. <laughs> believe it or not, before I got boxed up. Oh, uh, Harlow, that's. Thank you. And you see, like, Lucian is kind of like, like <laughs> squaring his face and boxing his face as well to make sure it's appropriately framed and good lighting. Uh, well, Harlow, if it means. Anything at all. If this is me looking into a mirror, then, well, I feel good about my future. We got a lot of kung fu we gotta learn first. Come again. What did you say? What did you say? Martial arts. Well, although I may not have the keenest of eyes, but I've noticed at least on one occasion, those stumbles, those, those don't appear to be stumbles per se. Is there a method to your madness, Harlow? Yeah, Harlow stands up, stretches his back, and enters bear stance. Bear stance! <gasps> oh, I thought you were going to... Sorry, I thought for a second you were going to hit me. Yes, I almost did. Oh. I lost myself to the ferocity of the bear. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my. Harlow, I have so much I can learn from you. I must tell you, though, I'm 
remarkably frail and terrible physical activity. Do you think you can work with that? I'm also very frail. But you do have to do some physical activity, mostly yoga. I, myself and well, calisthenics, any type of aerobic exercise, it hasn't really gone too well for me in the past. I find my exercise better executed through battles of wits and exchanges of various phrases. Well, you better sharpen that blade because we're going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the toughest dogs there are at that. The Illuminati ain't no joke. He like kind of like leans in. Harlow, d d is Illuminati for you like a like a catch-all for like the problems and and, and the evils I'm talking in the struggle? about the real <laughs> Illuminati. <laughs> They're an organization of wizards that no, try I, to I manipulate know. reality. No, 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 no. Again, he like leans in. I, I know, I know, and you know that. I just. Whereas I believe the Illuminati certainly exist and most definitely are pulling strings, I I don't think they're around every corner, Harlow, and I I, I fear they I feel that they they take up the crevice and corners of every inch of your brain. Well they would yours too, and they will, eventually. The truth of the matter is, shepherds to the flock, however you want to put it, these people were already chosen by the Illuminati. Harlow, are you insinuating that it wasn't a random happenstance of Kiris pulling us all together in a tavern, that we were all selected previously by the Shadow Organization? That's how they operate. You would watch Lucian kind of like just like plump down into the chair and just begin to ponder, have I been underestimating Harlow in the way that they've been observing the world? Harlow, if well, this would change everything, Harlow. Do you have an idea? Well, I have several ideas at any given time. None of them are typically of much use. Uh, well, they say there's no such thing as a dumb idea. I have had several people in my life tell me the exact opposite, Harlow. <laughs> uh, regardless, I... Uh, the others, I feel as though they need some space. I feel as though they need some air. What are, what are you planning to get up to for the rest of our time here? Yeah... I was going to wait over on that chair by the door until someone came back. And I was going to gauge their response. Oh, the rocking chair over in the corner that seems to be catching that sunbeam beautifully. Yeah. You noticed the one with the cat? I did. And next to it, it has those crochet needles. Right. I'm probably not going to do much with those. I don't know how. I never learned how to do that. <sighs> well, Harlow, you... Wait for whoever you need to wait on. I think I'm of a like mind. I I know Queen Eltano has had quite a day, but if the others are going to be getting some air, I'd like to I'd like to fashion a plan of action. I'd like to know where it is we're going next and what we're doing. So you rest, have a seat. I'm going to wait for Queen Eltano to emerge and I'd like to speak with her. I think the others probably need some space and some time on their own. I don't know what to bother them with this. Right. The fates are stewing at the moment. I'm just waiting for whatever's happening to happen. You go find out all the information you can, I suppose. Uh, I'll see. I'll see what I can find. And Lucian just kind of like picks up and goes over to a separate chair area and isn't like going to go seeking Queen Otano, but it's just going to make himself available because he doesn't want to crowd her because she's had a pretty rough uh, couple hours as well. Good point. Yeah, I mean, it's... it's she likes uh, to drink. It's close to the middle of the day. Uh, <laughs> oh, no, it's you, noon. You know that uh, it's basically... She's probably going to be heading out for, you know, if she's still planning on eating, at least. Uh, she'll probably be heading over for lunch here soon. They'll be serving the meal here shortly. And so, uh, you know that she'll probably be heading out here fairly soon. Uh, even if it's just to maintain that decorum of you know, being the being the queen and having her people see her. Yeah, I'll just make myself available that I can see them coming down like a hallway, but also like see into an ounce of the dining hall area that we've spent some time. Um, yeah. So 
where these chairs are in front of the fireplace, uh, to the left, uh, you saw the door that she headed into, uh, which is, uh, also the same door that you saw her and Brick come out of once before when they were having their meeting before they came into the, uh, dining hall. And then directly to the right is the dining hall that you all just fought Elmwish in earlier that morning. And so... Yeah, I mean, it'll it'll probably be mealtime here before too long. Okay. And you'll be able to see her leave this door before she goes into the dining room. Beautiful. I'll just plop down there next to the earth on the, on the red couches. I'll pull out my songbook, my notebook, do some doodles, do some scrawlings, update some of the notes, and try to work on some of the stories and some of the songs that he's been writing, and just wait, bide my time. Perfect. All right, so Hildegard and Friend went ahead and uh, took off together. Uh, where did you guys go? Um, because Friend is Petreed out right now, um, I'm uh, at least I think he is. Um, I are, are you actually still here or are you using Petreed since this? Yeah, to- not actually, just not really wanting to. Uh, or, or understanding how to deal with the situation is just pretending like uh, having picked up a little bit of what went on downstairs and having picked up on the, the gestures between uh, Lucian and Harlow that maybe Hildegard had something extra to do with it. A uh, friend is just like, if I can't see them, they can't see me type thing. Just yeah. doesn't know how to deal with this. So is pretending to be that way, but eyes are still lit up, still you know very he is coherent um so not doing a great job of hiding it yeah so uh guiding him uh, by his hand um hildegard is very um wrapped up in her own thoughts right now so probably is not aware of friends um ruse and just leads him to a hillside uh outside where she can sit in the shade of like a large tree anything with like a decent canopy so that she can be she can like study the difference of shadows playing across like the light in the grass um just somewhere there and then making sure the friend is situated she'll just uh sit down and uh, just start thinking probably uh do that i assume a lot of people do this <laughs> that like thinking state you get into outside where you just start like pulling grass absently while you're thinking yeah um yeah that's where she's at right now and uh She'll be that way for probably uh, 40 minutes or until friend uh, interrupts her. Um, so yeah, is friend doing anything during that 40 minutes or just staying completely still? Friend is just completely still also kind of drinking in this situation. We will say that uh, friend sitting outside in the sunlight is going to go ahead and activate his photosynthesis. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Uh, so. yeah, I'll take it. I'll take it, baby. <laughs> Uh, since we haven't really called that out at all, um, <laughs> since the show started, but, uh, yeah, so friend will get his photosynthesis just kind of sitting there completely dead still Sweet. in the sunlight. And that uh, levels me up to 10 or 11. Well, <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, uh, you're just going to be the powerhouse now. Um, uh, but yeah, so about 40, 45 minutes or so passed by of, Hildegard just kind of hanging out in the uh, under the tree, kind of absentmindedly just picking grass. And uh, yeah, after about 45 minutes or so, what's Hildegard's next kind of course of action? Yeah, she'd, you know, brush brush all of the dead grass away and uh, um, look over a friend who is still tranced out. Is Petrie around? Uh, Petrie is there. Yeah, Petrie has not gone anywhere. Okay, so she would like wave to get um to get friends attention through petrie uh and waving at petrie friend would very slowly and slightly just turn and look to hildegard <laughs> trying to get their attention uh hi friend how was your morning it was good uh harlow took me to get some ice cream it i, I didn't save any for you i'm sorry I, I didn't even think about it but he really seemed to like it so i liked it too that's good. I'm not sure I've ever uh, heard of that before, but maybe I'll try some sometime. It seemed like the there's one rare trader. It was kind of his uh, his 
bread and butter, I think is what people say. That's, that's what he did, was ice cream. Fascinating. Well, that sounds lovely. We, uh, we spoke more with, um, with Elmwish. And when I say spoke, I mean, we, we did talk with him, but we also did other things to him in order to try to get him to talk more freely. I know you're not too happy with that, so, uh, I'm, well, I'm glad you weren't there for it. What, what did he say? <sighs> he said he knew, uh, a lot of things, knew a lot about all of us. Like, uh, like he, uh, was, uh, watching us or pulling strings in our lives he knew about what happened to me village have i told you what happened to me village no no right before i met you right before i came to those stones i was i was living in a village with uh me parents and me friends and uh i was out in uh the woods when i was coming home it got well it got destroyed by demons and monsters i'm not quite sure what they were but I, as far as I know, I'm the only one that survived. And, and Elm was, was doing that? I don't think he was there himself, but it sounds like he knew that it was happening. I mean, he said he uh, summoned the fiends themselves, so whether he was there with them or not, I'm not sure. But um, he at least sent them, if nothing else. How, how will you know if you were the only one left? Should, should we go back? Have you ever been back? No, 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 no. I've... The idea of that clearly agitates her. She starts picking at grass more aggressively. She gets one of those, like, crabgrass roots that keeps going and going. And uh, she says, I mean, I I just ran away, and just a few days after that I met you, so no, I haven't haven't been back. Uh, suppose I don't know if anyone else survived. I just, I can't imagine that they, that they did. I'm, I had no idea that Elmush was doing those things. I, I was just joking when I thought that when I had accused him, I, I, I just didn't think it was Brother Brick. I, I didn't know that it, we would do those things to him because I said that he was the spy. I, I, I'm sorry, Hildegard. I mean, no, friend, it's a good thing you did. It led us to actually catch him. That's what we needed to do. Brick was innocent. We can't let bad things happen to innocent people. We can't let them be accused of the crimes of the guilty. Yeah, I just wish... I just wish it didn't have to happen that way, I guess. Did did he say anything else? Why your village? Or or you said he's been messing with all of us? Yeah, yeah. Let me think what else he said. Um, well, he threatened Thistle's, uh, he threatened Thistle's parents. He threatened her, her inn. I, I couldn't quite get a sense if he'd already done something there, like he did to my village or if he was just threatening that he would he said that he had uh, spies and agents everywhere that he's the reason that curious left us not that she's working with him but that he tricked her that he got his agents to bring her back to uh vaneth that's where she's from so that she'd be away from us i think she's walking into a trap and uh i i don't quite understand everything he said about about uh harlow and Lucian, but I think he might have done something to Lucian's parents, too. He has a real, uh, problem with all of our parents for some reason. <laughs> I think he even mentioned something about your creator. What about my creator? What did he say? Um, oh, what, what did he say? I'll have to lean on Kyle a little bit for, for that. Uh, part of what you remember is that he had talked about the fact that friend was created as a tool of war for Rashalon. Thank you. Yeah. That he and Brick were both, like, instruments rather than individuals. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, he said, um, I, he, he equated you and Brick to, like, hammers and saws and stuff. You know, th things to use, not people to be friends with. And, yeah, may maybe he didn't say anything about your creator. Maybe I'm getting that mixed up with all of our other parents. But, um, yeah, I mean, he just had really terrible said really terrible things about you and Brick and uh, either was responsible for killing Thistle's parents or threatened that that was what he's going to do next. And does Hildegard mention that Brick and I were made for to made as tools to use for war or just tools to use in general? Uh, she would just say in general. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so, okay. Well, if he's going to hurt Thistle's parents, how do we, how do we 
how do we stop them? How do we, how do we see or 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 stop more fiends from hurting villages and uh, make sure Thistle's parents are okay or, or or check on Lucian's parents? How are we supposed to do all of these things? Yeah, well, it's it's a lot to tackle, isn't it? That's a that's a lot of things to try to do. I think that I'm most worried about Thistle's parents right now, and I know they're not too far from here, which is is really helpful. It sounded like as terrible as this is. It sounded like whatever happened to. Lucian's parents already happened, maybe a long time ago, I'm not quite sure. But, um, Thistle's parents, there's there's still a chance for them. And maybe, maybe, uh, Lucian's parents are, uh, alive somewhere, but we know that Thistle's parents were recently, and hopefully they still are. As for how do we stop it on a, like, demons from destroying villages all over the place, I don't know. That's something we've got to figure out. That's a bigger problem. At least we don't have to worry about Emwish himself anymore. Um... Yeah, I had, uh, what ha- what ha- how- how did that- how, how did that happen? What happened with him? Well, I, uh, I did some things that I should not have, and I did some things that I think I should have. And, uh, uh, the short answer is that now he's dead. How do you- you all seem so sure, or you just seem to know when it's okay for somebody to live and- somebody to die how do you how do you know yeah i mean that's i was so preoccupied i didn't realize that uh petrie was right here i would have been talking all through all of this with you but that's what i've been thinking about the past few minutes sitting here um how do we know when it's right and when it's wrong and uh i don't know i'm still kind of just a kid i'm still i like to think i'm an adult but i'm i'm still trying to figure things out but um I do think, I mean, I really respect Lucian and even Kyrus and Queen Altano. I think they're all very wise, but I think they, well, I, I don't know what Kyrus would have said, but I think that um, Lucian and the Queen were wrong about this one. They they said not to not to kill him. I don't think that was right. I mean, here's, here's what I think, friend, and maybe I'm wrong, but it's what I think right now. When, when you're in a village let's say, in, in here in Yurisk, and you see a, a building burning down, you've got to put the fire out. Otherwise, the fire will spread, and it will burn more buildings down. And uh, it's not enough to just watch it and be sure that, it, that the fire, like, tell the fire not to spread to other buildings. You've got to put the fire out. And, I mean, I'm sure you've observed animals as much as I have, maybe even more than I have, spending all that time standing there in the forest. Um, and I, I said this to Lucian, too. I said, I don't think that wolves are evil, but wolves do kill things and eat things because they are wolves. Elmwish, I think, is evil because it's just in his nature. It's the kind of person that he was. He is like a wolf in the sense that all he knows how to do is destroy things. And uh, what's different about him and a wolf is, you know, a wolf eats a deer to survive. Elmwish attacked me village for, I don't know, for power? Because someone else who is even more powerful and more greedy told him to? I don't know. I don't know. But that's not right. That's a fire on a building that could spread and burn more buildings. Burn more buildings down. That uh, put the fire out that didn't spread really resonates um, with friend. Um, so what do we do now? Well, I think we regroup with the others. I uh, think we check on Thistle's parents. We see what options we have if we can uh, if we can levy Queen Altano's uh, forces, if she can spare any troops to, to protect Thistle's village. I know that may be asking a lot because all of Jehosrin is under threat right now. Maybe we evacuate uh, Thistle's village and bring them here, the security in numbers. I don't know what our options are. I think that whatever they are, we need to get to Thistle's village. I think that we need Thistle's opinions and Thistle's expertise on that, as well as whoever lives in her village. We have to figure out what they want, but we also have to figure out what's best and safest for them. Um, and uh, friend, this this isn't quite related to what what do we do now in terms of where do we go, but uh, can I can I ask you something? Of course. I, I I, don't think that I was wrong to kill Elmwish. I think that that's what I needed to do to keep the fire from spread, to keep his fire 
from consuming more. But I was wrong in other ways today. I, um, I inflicted pain on him just because it felt good. Just because it made me happy to see him hurt. And, and, and that was, that was not right either. I, yeah, you, you don't need to know the details. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you if you want, but I don't think you, you want to know. No, that's okay. It's okay. Um, but all that to say, like, I think that sometimes we do need to be firm and sometimes that means being violent and sometimes that means killing bad people or putting out fires but that doesn't mean we need to hurt people just because it will make us feel better i i wasn't right to do that and so i i guess i just ask well i'd ask two things i ask that you forgive me and i'd ask that you keep me in check don't like watch me and if i if i start to drift pull me back i think well i know that you know quite a bit more than I do, and so I will absolutely forgive you because we're friends, and that's what friends do. Um, I'm still learning so much about what it is that we're doing here, and I just want to make sure that we're all doing the right thing. So I will, I will gladly, whatever that is, I will gladly keep you off of that ledge sh- should I notice... Um, maybe some extra violent intent. Um, just know that if I do anything, it's because I care. Um, but I would love to respect that, uh, that request. Thank you. Uh, ice cream? That sounds lovely. Let's, let's get the others, though. We need, we have a lot to figure out. Okay. So, as you both decide on... Uh, rounding up the others to go get ice cream. What is what has Thistle been up to for the last 45 minutes or so? Thistle went and found a tree and climbed up as high as they safely could to find a branch to sit on and has been just kind of scribbling in a notebook some thoughts and started writing a letter to their parents. And it says, Dear Mom and Dad, I'm so sorry it's taken me so long to write. So much has happened since I left. I've made so many new friends. I've even defeated my first enemies. And I took my first trophy, a claw of an Anzu. I'd never seen one before. Holy shrikes, was it terrifying. I barely came up to its knee, but I still took it out with no problem. You would be so impressed. My friends and I all stepped up to help protect and save people from those who wish to do harm. And don't worry, we're keeping each other protected and safe too. I love you both so much. I hope you're doing all right. And the pencil just kind of scribbles off and all over the letter, and they rip it out of the notebook and just crumple it up into their hand. Oh, this is so stupid! And just kind of throw it to the ground. I left my home for a reason. I I didn't... I felt so stifled there. I don't want my parents to be right, but I also don't want them to be dead. I don't know what to do. What are the odds that I'm up in the tree that Hildegard and friend were sitting underneath? Well, you took off before them, so I'm going to say, um, go ahead and <laughs> roll me a d10. Friend just gets hit with a ball of paper. <laughs> <laughs> Ice cream? <laughs> that is a one. <laughs> a one. Oh, man. One is good this time, right? <laughs> you are... Not in the exact same tree, but your tree is fairly close to theirs. Uh, Not close enough that you would have seen them right away, but it is something that you would eventually recognize them here shortly. But I would say, right, like, as you write the letter, uh, probably took you, what, 15, 20 minutes or so to write down all your thoughts in that letter. Uh, Then you, like, crumbled it up and threw it. uh, And then uh, you... I'm going to say that you wouldn't have noticed them just yet. I think after like a few seconds of sitting and expressing some thoughts, they'd probably feel bad for having thrown the letter because that is the first attempt to reach out to their parents. And they would scramble down the tree and try to go find the paper that they discarded. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty easy to find, uh, you know, a, a sheet of parchment paper on the grass uh as you do run down though you look over and you see probably about 
I would say about 75, 80 yards away is uh, Hildegard and friend. Uh, and you see Hildegard just on the ground, just picking grass. Um, and uh, yeah, just appears like super deep in thought and not really like she probably wants to be disturbed right now, necessarily. Okay. Um, Thistle's going to do their best to straighten out the piece of paper and try to erase some of the scribbles so that it's still somewhat legible and like reverently fold it as if it wasn't just discarded as if it were nothing and put it in a pocket and like wipe wipe their eyes and make sure their fur is like normal <laughs> not like all bunched up and wet or anything and very like don't be suspicious start to like walk over <laughs> to where Hildegard and friend are as you start to walk over you hear something kind of in the distance you hear what sounds to be the formation of troops uh it sounds as though there's a large number of troops that appear to be uh like kind of shouting back and forth to each other and appear to be gathering uh and you can tell that it's on the uh so where your tree is you're probably about i don't know i'd say maybe about 20 yards from the left hand side of the castle uh, you can tell that this sound is coming from the right side of the castle. Uh, not very far from it. Okay. Like, in the direction that Hildegard and friend are, or like... Uh, no, opposite direction. So, where you are is you're on the left-hand side of the castle uh, by the trees. This is almost directly on the other side of the castle Got on it. the opposite side. So I wouldn't be running past them to find where the sound is? Uh, no, no. You would be running actually away from Hildegard and friend to go and find the sound. Okay. I'm going to roll a d10 this time just for my own <laughs> poisonal reasons. And if you land on a seven, you get struck by lightning, remember? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I rolled a three, so I'm safe from lightning for now. <laughs> okay. But that means I'm now changing my trajectory from running, walking towards Hildegard, and I'm just going to run straight to the noise. <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, it takes you, uh, it's, it's a couple minute jog probably takes you about five minutes to get from where you were to the other side of the castle. It's a pretty decent sized building. Uh, and you see on the other side a very large contingency of soldiers, not necessarily wearing any kind of one armor. It appears to be a variety of different types of either personally made armor or uh, things along those lines. And every bit of armor has a winged serpent in the shape of a circle on it. And you can see that these are the Chahosrini's forces that are gearing up to head into battle. Is there someone kind of nearby that looks like they're somewhat in charge and not like actively moving with the majority of the group? Give me an awareness check. Okay. That's my combat sheet. <laughs> uh, could I do perceiving? Uh, I'd do perceiving, yeah. It's going to be a total of 14. 14. So as you kind of glance around... You see that there is what you've learned being here in Yiddish is that there is not a necessarily an official rank structure, not necessarily an official like these people are in charge type thing besides the queen. But the one there seems to be one person that everyone um, is listening to uh, and, and is directing others. Uh, and you see that there is a satyr woman who is standing uh, and kind of like pointing around for different people and like having them get into different groups uh, and you see that there are some groups of individuals with bows that you could tell is the more rear ranged contingency uh, to pull up the rear flank uh, you see that there are a number of individuals with like spears uh, that are going into one group that seem as though they would be you know like the uh, the lead flank to be able to prevent any kind of maybe horsemanship, uh, as well as a group of individuals with just a hodgepodge of axes and swords and scimitars and, and all kinds of things to make up more of the middle. And uh, this satyr woman is kind of directing others uh, into different sections where I think she feels as though they would be most beneficial based on either A, whatever weapon they brought, or B, whatever role that they filled in previous combat encounters. Okay. Roughly how tall is she? 
Uh, I would say she's probably about, uh, I'm going to say that satyrs are, I believe, a little bit on the smaller side. Uh, I would say she looks like she's probably about maybe 4'9", 4'10"-ish. Not super, super tall. I would say probably about about average for a satyr female in this area would be roughly a little under five foot tall. Okay. So I don't need to jump to get her attention. Well, not that high anyway. <laughs> right. Um, I'm going to run up to her and uh, say, what, what happened? Did something happen? What's going on? Was there an attack? Uh, with just the information that we received from the queen, uh, it is about time for us to begin to mobilize and move towards the border uh, in case any forces decide that they want to finally make their push. So we are going to be mobilizing across the border and hopefully we can stop any invading forces in their tracks. From the sound of it though, we might be too late. There's been reports of forces using the border between Posh and Chahosrin as an entry point where we do not have uh, warriors stationed. If Thistle could turn white, they would turn white and they're just going to run away and try and go find Tarlow. Uh, where's the first place you want to look? Um, I'm going to backtrack and go to the place where actually, because he showed up after I left before, so I didn't know that he was in the castle. Right? Uh, you, you were on your way out. I would say that you may have seen him maybe out of the corner of your eye, but due to your heightened emotional state, you didn't feel like stopping and, and trying to have a conversation or anything like that. You you were trying okay. to be alone. And so you you glanced him out of the corner of your eye as entering in through the castle with friend. But um, I feel like because of Thistle's emotional state, you just kind of made a beeline for outside. Right. Um, I will, I will go back to the castle then because that's the place that I last remember having spotted him and just okay. see if he's around there. Yeah, I mean, uh, as you kind of throw open the door and head inside, uh, is Harlow still sitting on the couch? Yeah, in that, like, rocking chair. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, you, you kind of bust in, and right in front of the fireplace, you see Harlow and Lucian um, sitting and uh, <laughs> kind of waiting for everyone to be ready to head back in. I bust open the door, and I see him. Don't even say anything. I'm just going to run up to him and tackle him and just, like... <laughs> try to make myself a small little ball and just kind of hug into him and just start crying. Hey, whoa. What's going on? What is happening? There's, there's forces outside. They're setting up an army. The, the woman, Seda, said um, something about attacks on the, the border of Posh and Jehosrin, and that's where I'm from, and with everything that Elmwish said, and he said some awful things about you too. Please tell me it isn't true. Tell me you didn't hurt people. I didn't hurt anybody. Uh, this is dire news. I don't know what to do. I, I... Uh, Thistle, sit. Sit with us. Feet on the ground. Let's take a couple of deep breaths together. Can and I sit on work. the ground? You sit wherever you are most comfortable, Thistle. Okay. Here you go. Now. Slide off Harlow's lap and just crisscross applesauce on the ground. Now, if you can, I know this seems like it's a lot... What exactly did you hear? Who told you this information? There's a woman outside. I heard voices. Uh, army forces are gathering and and preparing. And I asked her what happened, if something had happened. And she said that based off of things she heard from Queen Altano, they're preparing to ward off against an attack, but she's worried that something already happened. And she said that it might have happened where... God, I don't even want to think about it. I see. Thistle, I can't tell you that everything is going to be okay, but I can tell you. And Lucian kind of like looks up to Harlow, and I like to imagine like you're like sitting on the ground, Thistle looking at Lucian, and Harlow's kind of like behind you, still over in the chair. And Lucian looks over to Harlow. And Thistle... What I can tell you is that we'll be with you. No matter what it is we're walking towards, no matter what it is we find. Now, I'm tired of waiting for the queen. Let's go find the others and make a decision on what we're doing. How does that sound to you, Harlow? It sounds like whatever's gonna happen just happened. Actually, on second thought, Harlow, do me a favor. Will you go and collect the rest of the group? Take Thistle. 
I, I have something I want to do really quick. Don't do anything rash. <laughs> no, Harlow. Huh, no. You know me too well. Come along, Thistle. Thistle's like white knuckle gripping their tail as tightly as they can and just like scurrying to keep up with Harlow. Can you point me in the direction of the soldiers? They were outside on out here to the right. Do they look like they're like, I like you said, they're mismatched and all that stuff, but they're not getting ready to like march out tonight, are they? Because of Harlow's history, I would say give me, you don't have any kind of skill in military, do you? No, I don't think so. But are they like, you know, setting up camps or are they? They appear to be gathering up supplies and getting into um, not necessarily formations because Shahosrani's uh, military forces do not do like official formations necessarily. Um, but they do but seem they're like to grouping be. Off. Yeah, they're they're definitely grouping up. Uh, they are gathering up weapons and different armors and things of that nature. You see a couple of kind of crude shields being passed out. A combination of like kite shields, heaters, uh, a number of different things that appear to be have been very crudely made, uh, and then some that do appear to be much much better quality. You see that there are a couple of them, I will say, because of Harlow's kind of awareness, that you see that there are a few of these shields that appear to have an engraving of a shield with a griffin on it scraped off and a winged serpent in a circle painted over it. So these appear to be like spoils of war, essentially, that have been confiscated and repurposed for their military uh, based on any kind of skirmishes that may have happened at the border or anything along those lines. Because they did say that they had killed a few scouts, captured or killed a few scouts that had made it through the border. And so this appears to be, you can see some of these we- some of these shields at least that have that symbol scraped off and then a the symbol of Yirisk p- painted over it. But they do appear to be mobilizing. I see, I see. I see, I see, said the blind man. <laughs> well, I guess my thought process, I don't know if I can explain it, is just that if they're getting ready to theoretically get into skirmishes here, there's a pretty good chance that they're not fighting on, like, two major fronts. It does not appear as though they are getting ready for a skirmish in Yidisk, that they are heading to, they are, they're moving out, they're, they're heading over to the border. They are not planning on fighting there, like, in the city, they're not, like, setting up encampments in the city to do so. They are going to go and reinforce the border. I see, I see. Oh, let's round up the others. Uh, I would say right around this time is whenever Hildegard and friend come uh, looking to go have ice cream with everyone. No time for ice cream. <laughs> Such a vibe shift. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I would say uh, as like they come in and Harlow and Thistle come back, uh, Queen Oltano is going to come out and start heading towards uh, another room next to where the dungeon was. Oh, walking by where Lucian has been sitting. Oh, uh, this is my this is my moment, and I I take off and I trailer. Okay, uh, she kind of enters into this room to the side and is just about to close the door behind her. Yeah, and it's like really deft, and it's certainly not like he's practiced this several times before as he is trailing other people through hallways and corridors. He just like slowly slips his foot in there, and before it shuts, it's like weasels his way through there. Um, oh, um, I'm so sorry, Queen Queen Altano. Do, uh, do you have a moment to to speak, or have I caught you at a bad time? As she kind of turns to look at you when you put your foot in the door, you see that um, being elvish, a lot of her features kind of have that, um, I don't want to say perfection, but that, that kind of very smoothness, everything. Ageless. Um, yeah, it it's definitely very ageless, but it, it there's not a lot of imperfections necessarily uh, because not only is she elven, but she is also part of the monarchy. So she, you know, very likely has good skincare routine, uh, if anything. And so uh, as she turns to look, you see that her eyes are bloodshot red uh, and her cheeks appear to be flushed. If I could take back that last sentence, I would. That was a foolish question to ask, of course. 
This is a bad time. I apologize. I was only hoping uh, a few moments in private to speak with you. She kind of holds open the door and lets you in before closing it behind you. And you see that the room you're in has a very large four post bed um, and a desk in here. But you see that the pictures on the wall are covered with a sheet with like uh, dark linen. Hmm. How can I help you, Master Lucian? Somewhere in the recesses of Lucian's mind, he craves knowledge and answers about what is going on in this room, but he knows time and place. Um, well, Queen Otano, I, I'll speak as plainly as I can. Much has transpired in but the last few hours, and even more so has transpired just in the last few moments. My traveling compartner, Thistle, has explained that you are mobilizing units. Is this true? Based on the information that Elmish has provided, we must seek to reinforce the borders uh, to prevent any potential invasion. Uh, I will be leaving a contingency behind in order to support the city should anyone make it through, but a very large number of our forces are going to be uh, in the trees around the border in order to potentially ambush anyone who, is, who makes it across. I understand. I understand. It's, well, it's a reasonable decision. It's a very wise decision. To Queen Otano, I... As we came here as volunteers from, from Paj, but you, in this relationship, this is the closest thing that I have to a contract. I, well, it's not important. I, you heard just as well what Elmwish said specifically about young Thistle's family. I wanted to come and I wanted to ask your leave. I do not know what hopes or what plans you had for us, but I did not wish to disappear in the night. I wanted to make sure that we had closed our business and that we can move forward. I want to be of aid and I want to be of assistance. And I know that we promised we would stay and help. But you should have seen the fear in that young Kleppen's eyes. I'm asking your permission to take our group and head to her home and check on her family. You see, she like looks over at the desk there. Uh, go ahead and give me an awareness check real quick. That is going to be a nine. You look over kind of where her eyes are going, and you see that there is one solitary picture that is not covered, uh, and it is of a what looks to be Queen Oltano, a younger Sindel Oltano, her daughter, and a male elf in the photo. And she looks back at you. Master Lucian, um... Correct me if I'm wrong, but young Thistle said that they were Jehosrenes. Regardless of even not being Jehosrenes, family comes first. I agree. And so, if you need to take leave to go and ensure that family stays family, then I only wish you a speedy return after that business is concluded. Lucian kind of lets his eyes fall onto the, the photo that you've just described and finally like comes back and meets Queen Altano's eyes. <sighs> Thank you. Thank you for understanding. I, family comes with challenges, but we oftentimes do not fully appreciate those challenges until we look back on them fondly. Thank you for this leave. And he does the same bow that he has been doing and like starts to move towards the door because he's getting the feeling that she needs some time and needs some space. If you need a ship, um, I cannot uh, I cannot provide any personnel at this moment, but the majority of our conflict exists on land, not by sea. And so if you need a ship to get you to Thistle's home quicker, we can have one of our more magical ships take you. We simply would input the coordinates and the ship would get you there fairly quickly. I don't know exactly how far you're going, but um, I believe that the young Kleppens said that their inn was on the border of Posh and Chehosrin. That would be much faster by river than by horse or foot, and much safer as well. <sighs> Queen Otano, your grace, your, your kindness knows no bounds. Thank you, that would be much appreciated. I will... Uh, send word for you to take a ship as well as for you to be taught the spell word to have the ship bring you home uh, whenever that is done. Thank you. 
and Lucian like kind of goes to reach out for like the handle of the door and before he actually like grabs it pulls it twists it whatever the appropriate thing bops it I don't know um, <laughs> he, he's going to say what was their name as he just glances to the left over at that photo Hamish Hamish I know you did not ask for an opinion but well I'm not one to keep my opinions to myself memories are good and well but stories stories live on and he just excuses himself from the room as you uh as you do leave you hear the door lock behind you and um you see like there's a small little moat of light essentially that goes underneath the door and shoots out uh and you know that this is very likely the word being sent to the shipyard for you to take your boat amazing um hasn't been terribly long i'll head out into the hall head outside if necessary to see if i can find the rest of the group uh i would say you all probably run into each other right in the foyer um as lucian's heading out and everyone else is coming back in hildegard and friend um as they're being told there's no time for ice cream by harlow uh who's entering back in you all kind of meet in the foyer uh at that point lucian can share oh man would uh would Hildegard and friend have have seen the troops at all? I would say from the direction that you guys came from, you wouldn't have unless you kind of like popped out uh, when Harlow and Thistle, uh, like if you like saw them over on the side, uh, you probably could have like peeked around and seen them, but uh, there would, just wouldn't have been any interaction. Okay. It, yeah, friend. If if friend did see them, friend would have just been marching like them, like walking as they're walking. Awesome. Well, glad to see that we're all back together. It's it's been a trying day so far. How's everyone faring? And it's like more like hollow words, like it's the pleasantries that you say, like whenever somebody asks you in the hallway, "Hey, like how's your day going?" Oh, it's going fine. But there's not much like mm-hmm. weight or power behind it. Right. You say at the funeral parlor. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. <laughs> I th- I think Mr. Harlow's sick. He said we couldn't get ice cream, but he loves ice cream. We don't have a lot of time. We need to make a decision. Yes, I... Well, I don't want to be making decisions for you all, but in looks over to Thistle, I stole away and had a brief conversation with Queen Altano on your behalf, Thistle. I've secured us a ship. If you would like to go check on your parents, Queen Altano has provided a ship which will get us there as quickly and safely as we possibly can. Thistle's eyes start welling up with tears again. And they're just going to walk over to you and just kind of hug around your leg and just say very quietly, thank you. There's no need to thank me. It was the right thing to do. Um, so, um, I, I guess we leave now? I think that's a great idea. I heard your parents might be in danger. Yeah, um, I heard that too. I'm trying not very well not to dwell on it too much. I, I also heard that I was created as a tool. And if that's the case, then I'm going to be the kind that saves parents. That's the kind of tool that I'm going to be. Oh, friend, you are certainly not a tool. I've met many tools in my day. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, man. (laughs) Friend has no idea what that actually means. (laughs) You you know, (laughs) Mr. Lucian, you didn't tell me you've met other golems. You, like, watch as, like, Lucian, like, catches what has actually transpired. Like, uh, We'll have plenty of time to discuss this on the ship, (laughs) friend. Yeah, but you guys head over to the ship where they give you the passphrase, um, which is Quetzalcoatl, uh, to return you back. No, shit. Uh, I'm sorry, what? I pulled up my notes to write down the passphrase, immediately puts notes back down. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, I feel like our I, I feel like our one oracle is going to be the only one who will remember <laughs> that. Um, but yeah, so where you can see on the map, uh, so Yiddisk is at the end of the river between Posh and Chehosrin, uh, up by the mountains. That's where you guys have been, way over in the the north direction here. Uh, and Great Oaks Tavern is going to be kind of down around this bend right near the border of where Posh and Jehozrin's land is. Uh, And so that is the direction that you're going to be heading. Based on 
the what's transpired here, it's probably going to take you, I'd say, around three days going max speed to get there. And so what we're going to... <laughs> uh, what we're going to do is, um, let's do, and so, uh, yeah, it's going to take you guys roughly about three days to get over to the Great Oaks Tavern. Uh, and that is going max speed. Uh, they went ahead and put a little bit of a, of an enchantment on the boat too, to try to get it there faster. That's so many days. Normally, this would take almost five or six days, uh, and then about another three or four days to get to Posh itself. Because uh, if you remember, it took you about ten days to get from the port in Posh all the way to Yirisk. And so this is uh, because there's so little of you going on the boat, and because it was a smaller boat, hmm. uh, they were able to get it to go a little bit faster for you. Yeah. But yeah, if you all are kind of ready, you can jump into the boat and it'll take off. Uh, and we can roll to see if there's any random encounters. Oh, no. Just Pets what we quattle. need. She, uh, Hildegard is practicing <laughs> spelling that on, like, her her school ledger. <laughs> it's the world's worst safe word. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> Kessel <laughs> Quartal. So, it's day one. Lucky number 13. <sighs> It hovered on that one for a second, uh, but that's day two and day three. Uh, you make the trek with no issues. Um, okay, cool. I forgot what all the numbers meant. <laughs> if anyone, basically what I was looking for was a nat one, essentially. Oh, okay. uh, uh, a nat one or a nat 20. A nat 20 would have been favorable conditions. A nat one would have been unfavorable conditions. But yeah, so... Anyone who kind of needed one who had used any sort of resources, uh, you would have had a long rest between now and then. Uh, as you follow this uh, trek, I'm assuming at least that uh, Thistle's ready to go. Uh, but you get to a port just kind of on the side. Uh, it, it does appear Thistle knows very clearly that this port is the one that... Uh, is roughly about an hour's walk from the inn, uh, and this is where supplies come in at. So you've walked this path from the inn to this dock many, many, many times to go and pick up supplies from incoming ships. And so you, everyone gets off the boat, starts to disembark, and starts to head that direction. Uh, I need everyone to give me an awareness check real quick. Can I interrupt just real quick for a transitory uh, boat thing that Hildegard would do? Uh, sure, yeah. Around uh, dinner time, at least the two days that were like on the on the water the whole time, she would uh, tap her um, her telepathic anchor and see if there's any pertinent conversations happening in Queen Eltano's dining room. Wow. <laughs> Damn. Um, I'm gonna say that just periodically you might hear Queen Eltano and Sindel uh, talking a little bit. Nothing about anything. Um, military wise okay. uh just very much of like them having kind of bonding conversations yeah but it doesn't appear as though there's there's many at least when you're when you're checking in there's yeah. not necessarily a lot of um tactical conversations going on yeah um whenever whenever there's like a day that is quiet and not a lot of stuff is going on uh hildegard will briefly check in at uh breakfast and dinner each day uh just to, mm -hmm. for military information to see if anything comes up or for blackmail but yeah uh, <laughs> uh primarily for military what the very first day you were on the boat there was no uh, no one was in the dining room at all for breakfast or dinner um okay. but then the second day they started going to meals again okay so harlow got a 12 I have yeah. three questions. Nat one. <laughs> yeah. Yes. First question, would the boat ride be enough time for Thistle to have um, turned the claw into like a properly Ooh. fastened dagger? Um, I will have to... If not, then take what the enchantment is... off. We'll take the five to six days. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what was the check for that again? Oh, that's um, a good question. Because I think to turn something into a weapon, it would be a check. But I'm trying to remember what that would be. 
I'm not, my goal is not to turn it into another master weapon. It's just to yeah. properly Just to turn it into like a it. dagger? Yeah. Rig? Would that, I would no. S- I would say just real quick, give me like an intelligence check. Okay. If you have a crafting skill you want to use. I do. Oh. Okay. I have leatherworking and I have wood carving. I don't feel like either of those would be sufficient if it's, making a if dagger. if it's carving a wood handle and a leather strap to make sure it's fastened properly. Uh, uh, sell, it. Uh, sell it. Okay. Okay. I can see that. Uh, yeah. You can go ahead and give me that check with the plus six. Okay. That's so disappointing. A total of 14. <laughs> that could have been so much better. 14 still not bad. Um, I would say that... You know, a 14 is really not bad with you not trying to turn it into any kind of like magical item or anything like that. You're just trying to sharpen it and like turn it into a dagger. So I'm going to say, yeah, you have an Anzu claw dagger now. Amazing. Um, On to my second question. (laughs) Could I roll um, perceiving instead of awareness while we're taking this trek? And third question, can I roll with advantage because I live here? Uh, I actually thought about that. Yes, you can use perceiving. Um, We're going to say that with... The panic that Thistle's having, I'm gonna cancel out the advantage on that. Okay, fine. If we could do. Oh, well, that's okay, because I yeah. rolled a natural 20 anyway. <laughs> you would. Get owned. So um, that is a total of 23 for our, our listeners. Uh, this is just a series of people hitting like Uno reverse cards back and forth for like six <laughs> yeah. minutes at the game. Unfortunately, the nat 20 just means that you get the bad news even faster because oh, you yay. smell smoke. Oh. oh, no. Barbecue? Uh, Soon. And it's definitely fun and Kyle. safe. I know you had a long day. You don't have to <laughs> rain it down on us, brother. Come on. Come on. Kyle, take it easy. You don't have to do this. <laughs> you smell smoke and you can see the smoke in the distance coming exactly where your inn is. Um. Okay. Thistle has been hurrying up until this point, but as soon as they smell that, they're just going to stop dead in their tracks and just kind of freeze. Is something wrong? It doesn't smell right. I... I don't know. I don't know if I'm ready to see what I think I'm going to see. Thistle, this isn't about being ready. I don't think that's possible. But we're with you. We're here with you. And no matter what we see, we'll still be here with you. Come, let us check on your family. I hope there's someone left to check on and they're going to continue going. So you continue to head over towards the tavern, and you see that the Great Oak is fully ablaze. Oh, no. You see that there are horses with carriages parked outside, emblazoned with a shield with a griffin on it. As you begin to approach, you see that... As everything is on fire, there are multiple soldiers standing uh, in the first room holding torches. And with that, I need everyone to do me a favor and roll for initiative. (laughs) Oh, man. The map's, like, so pretty, but also I'm, like, really angry at it. (laughs) Right. That's so heavy. Uh, my initiative would be a five for friend. Oh, man. Mine's a total of 14 for Thistle. Eight for Hildegard, whose eyes have gone pitch black. That's going to be a nine for Lucian. And then I'm going to get real funky with it afterwards, so just get ready. <laughs> get jiggy with it. Yeah. Uh, and then Harlow was... 15? Uh, 15 plus three, right? Uh, no, that should be... Oh, you're right, you're right. Uh, so 18. 18. And then, Lucian, any kind of uh, weird PC creep stuff you're doing real quick? <laughs> yeah, there's literally the most uh, PC creep stuff that's about to happen. I am going to, first and foremost, I'm going to give Thistle... Uh, I'm going to give Thistle a D4, and this is more narrative than anything else because I want them to just, like, be ushered forward into making whatever decision they want Mm -hmm. to do. So, Thistle, you can roll the D4 yourself so you can have that autonomy of what that feels like, what that looks like. So, I rolled a one. Okay. Okay. (laughs) Um, 
And then with my new battle drum ability, I'm actually going to switch initiative order with Harlow so I could be first, meaning that I can then give out reactive AP to people who come after me. Wow. Perfect. Ooh, All big right. play. Harlow really wanted to save the recipe for that butternut beer or whatever, too. <laughs> the honey nut, hey. honey, nut, uh, honey, nut <laughs> honey nut ale. Honey nut honey ale. Honey nut ale, yeah. <laughs> Butternut but, uh, beer is another beer. one, though. <laughs> <laughs> really close. <laughs> awesome. So, yeah, where we are right now, it's going to be Lucian with an 18, Thistle with a 15, Harlow at 9, Hildegard at 8, and Friend bringing up the rear with 5. And I think, uh, no, I know that that is where we are going to end oh, this session. Oh, yep, yep. You're evil. You're ah. evil. <laughs> where are you at in the initiative order, Kyle? Because you are being a bad guy right now. Kyle reveals himself <laughs> as the true BBEG. <laughs> I'm, I'm number 100 in the initiative order. Uh, be sure to everyone out there to hop into the Discord at discord.gg slash mythcraft to check out all this new character art whenever it starts dropping. You can actually see all of the characters that you've been listening to and see the faces that I have been traumatizing for the last uh, few <laughs> weeks. So uh, yeah, be sure to come in, check that out. We're gonna be releasing on Discord before anywhere else. Be sure to tune in to us next week to check out the resolution of the burning of the Great Oaks Tavern. And until then, keep crafting those stories.